What's up everyone? This is Demo Days episode number 3. Folks, tonight we have a solo session, right? So I'm going to be going solo tonight. We will also be looking at a brand new problem statement from Y Combinator's company directory and we put this together for you in a very nice, you know, interesting looking fig jam that you can use to actually understand this and together we're going to walk through this problem statement and just, you know, have a casual discussion around it. We're going to be going through this kind of mock simulator design process for an app that has AI generated podcasts. So, one thing I want you to realize this is early stage and it's using a new technology, right? Which is it's using something that is new which is AI. So, these guys are very early stage and when I found them, this is what I saw. They had this website, that a very simple basic website that I think had just been launched a couple of weeks back we saw this in march so march is when i took i think this screenshot and their pitch on the page was podcast personalized to your unique interests and um, when i saw their page interesting but from a design perspective i wasn't too impressed right um i saw they had a lot of ai generated artwork which immediately gave me the ai vibe but then at the same time i was like if you are using this as your hero image maybe it would be a good idea to just go in there and edit it a bit right like edit this from kickstart like um it felt very early and i was like okay i think that's just uh, how it is we've caught them at a very early stage and so this was around march and in may which is just uh, two weeks back they actually released their version 1.0 so the app actually exists now so this was the status quo right this is what we had shared with the 10k folks the cohort 8 members and uh, we said this is all they have they have an early demo but it doesn't seem like they have a product yet right they just released this product very recently so design their app and you are free to take whatever explorations you want do you want to play it a little bit more conservative like go safe do you want to go a little bit into ai patterns that you've seen right maybe do you want to do something uh, you know open exploration but the constraint is that it's about i think a two or three week timeline and you know you can of course make your case study later but that's the core work you have to get it done we're going to be going through aishwarya and simran's project right so aishwarya career transitioner simran joined to level up as a designer we're going to go through some of the inspo so real apps um curated by mobin right mobin amazing resource you guys probably know it already if not definitely check it out you know now going through this i'm sure even though even though all of you you know you mentioned different apps you might not use the same apps mentioned here like luminary and uh, 10% happier but you see there are some standard patterns and when it comes to content apps right so in the previous session we did another content app uh, those of you who are there you might remember this wuri uh, that one was stories this one is podcast now things like this as well right like the play screen now these are there's a lot of standard patterns here so one of the challenges designing an app like this is you have to be very aware of what the patterns are of course you can innovate you can do new things but that can't come at a cost to the functionality of listening to a podcast right there is a certain thing people expect where they want a play screen where they can actually move forward and backwards right there are some things which are kind of baked into the industry so usually good idea getting started collecting some screenshots so you, the app that you use the other apps that you've seen and the purpose of collecting these screenshots is to either now or later be able to identify patterns um and try to maybe even benchmark what do the top podcast apps look like what do the average podcast apps look like what is something that only a few have what is something that all of them have but i want to just show you some explorations so i showed you the explorations were a little bit around figuring out the architecture of the app what's the architecture right it's useful sometimes thinking in terms of screens but usually zooming one level up it's also useful think in terms of the architecture architecture can mean in terms of flow right where do people start and how does navigation happen or it could just mean let's just lay down a map of every possible feature and what are the things and based on this even if this is not perfect it helps you prioritize so you're like okay i've laid out a big enough map but it seems like we should do these on high priority these maybe later so aishwarya has i guess based on her the references that she's gone through a model of what the app might look like what the top level tabs might be and within each page what she might include uh checking out simran's exploration 
uh, Simino started with some low fidelity wireframes. So not exactly on paper, like higher fidelity than that. But, you know, black and white, just checking this out, you know, kind of also in a way, if you think about it, laying out the architecture, right? This and this, we're doing it in different ways. Um, and one way I like to think about this, right, is you're progressively building on top of it. When you're designing these apps, you're kind of designing these huge systems that have multiple moving parts. So starting with an exercise like this, whether it's, you know, laying it at a very skeletal level, like you're just describing in words, or maybe a level of higher fidelity where it's, you know, some of the actual UIs, maybe not with the final spacing and all of this applied to it, not the final colors, not the final typography, but still helps you imagine. Now, because earlier you are in your process, you're doing a lot of reading, but you're kind of constructing an image of it, maybe in your sketches, maybe in your head. I see an onboarding flow here and then a homepage and then what the core experience would be. Core experience, in this case, since it's a podcast app, it would be actually listening to a podcast, browsing a catalog of podcasts. So some things I found interesting, okay, um, based on the demo that I saw on their website, it seems like, you know, what Aishwarya has gone for as one of the core flows is how do you actually generate demos like that, right? What we just saw on their website was they did have a demo that you could listen to. I think for something like this, which is AI related, it makes sense to, you know, will people really believe that an AI podcast can be good? Given that it's a new thing, you can assume most people have never heard an AI podcast. So how do you get people on your side? How do you convince them that, hey, it is good? Because yes, once they create it and if they listen to it, it's great. But can you make that process happen earlier? So folks, overall, you know, kind of summarizing what I see here, um, some of the good stuff that, some of the good stuff Aishwarya has done is the standard flows. So things like login, pretty simple, like done a good job of taking their current brand, which was, I think, mostly the color purple and kind of expanding that out into this illustration style and, you know, taking the purple and applying it across. So good job on that. In terms of what the brief asked for, the brief said, this is a podcast app. They're very early. They don't have any product right now. Can you make their V1 and include explorations on how you would do AI related patterns, right? So you've, you've gone with the brief and, you know, done a good job of that. I think the balance that you've maintained, and, you know, this is something that's, I think, one of the challenges with these kind of apps, right, is it's a very standard thing. Like right? most podcast apps look very similar. So it can be a challenge being like, okay, how much do I just stick to existing patterns? But then my app looks like every other app out there. And how much is there actually some room to innovate? Uh, and I think you have a good balance of that. So I see you've included this kind of stuff, right? So you have thought about the core flows. So here, this is the consumption flow where you can actually see, you know, you can skim these podcasts faster. And the predictable parts, which is, you know, just like how, what's the layout what are the main level, top level pages and stuff. I think we've done a good job of that. In terms of the UI, clean UI, personally, I would have gone for maybe a different typeface, something with a little bit more personality, right? But then I think it's fine. Okay, not a big deal. Just uh, nice to have. The core thing here, The I think this flow, given that it's AI, this is kind of one of the most important flows here because this is kind of the core on everything that it rests on. Because without this flow, Right, folks, think about it from a product perspective. Without this flow, it's just another podcast app, right? So even if all of this is good, um, is it good enough for people to switch their habits, switch from whatever they use to this new thing? Um, this is the new, this is the, let's just say the differentiator, the thing that makes it different. And good job at this. I think it's a good uh, exploration of the chatbot style. And to be honest, I think given that it's so early, right? Talking now a little bit from a business or a product perspective, I think a lot of this rests on, see, interaction with the AI, we can figure out very nicely, right? We can figure out what's the optimal way, what's the inputs we need to get. And uh, see, that part can be figured out. But I think a lot of this rests on how good are their models? How good are their models that are actually generating this? Uh, but what you've done is you've designed a good way of interacting with these models. Uh, so nice one. Nice one, Aishwarya. I think definitely you should reach out to the founders, drop them an email with your case study. I think they would be pretty interested to check it out. Let's check out Simran's project now. So Simran also picked up PocketPod. One thing I definitely uh, like here is I like this typeface, right? It's not a very, um, it's not the default typeface. It kind of has a bit of personality. 
Uh, she's also used the higher weight of this, right? The, the, she's used the bold version also for the font. I think that looks cool. So one interesting difference that you'll notice here in Simran's approach is her core tabs here. Like these two are new, right? Like most apps have home and library. These two are the new uh, features here. So instant pod, which I'm assuming is the generator, uh, snippet flow. Let's look at the screen first. This looks a bit odd, mostly because, you know, um, normally we assume this kind of thing to be progress. But I think in this case, what you're trying to show is that the snippet was taken from this part of the episode of the timeline. It's a bit confusing. Uh, maybe I would try to make this look a little different, these cards. Another thing I would think about is, do I really need to show it as well? Maybe another important piece of information here could be the total duration. Right now, I think you show the start timestamp. But I think there could also be a total duration, right? So is this a 40 second or, you know, how long is the snippet? A good call, Simran, on including this. I think this is a good idea, which is feedback. Now, good that you've included it. I'm assuming right now it's accessible from here. But as a founder, I like what I would say is it is qu quite important that I get this, right? So in fact, as a founder, I would probably say make another iteration which makes this even more obvious, the, the touch point to give feedback. The reason being, given that these folks are so early stage, they don't know the full extent of how good their technology is, right? So they would probably want this feedback on a high priority so they can improve it, which means this thing making it way more visible here, such that a higher number of users actually give feedback, right? That can be really useful to an early stage startup. And so as a designer, you can really bring that to them that's something that they really need. Okay, instant pod. Now I see here. Now, in terms of the pattern, right? Folks, those of you who may be designed for AI, I'm sure you've started now observing a few AI related patterns. What you see here is a basic prompting uh, flow, right? So similar to let's say chat GPT or a lot of these other AI generation tools, there is a uh, just a prompt box and then few parameters that you can set, right? like vibe and in this case duration. Now, comparing this to Aishwarya's approach, right? Let's talk about some of the UX differences between these two. In this case, the UX flows in one direction. And so the possible negative to think about here is, does this get too long, right? So when developing this, one of the, th or maybe when you're prototyping this, one of the things you would want to kind of keep in check is, does it feel way too long, right? Like, does this come instantly? The, usually with chatbots, there's a lot of micro interactions as well. So you want to make it feel like it's a little bit more instant. But comparing this flow, which is like one at a time to this one. Now, personally, what I would say is something that Simran, I think you could probably do this as an iteration is here to select this. I, I need a minimum of two taps, right? So two taps for this to open and then click two taps for this to open and click. That's four tab for this. And how many ever taps to type this out? So how many ever for this? Four taps for this, and then one here. I think something you could make easier is this, keep it as it is. Something you could add here is also a voice input to make it faster to type, right? Saying something in voice, you can just save so much time. So maybe you also have a voice input button here. And these, given that you have the full screen to design, something worth thinking about is, can I actually expand these out? So can I actually show them open let me show you let me see if i can find you an example of this so let's talk about it from here right this you see this is from apple's recent keynote the basic screen that we're on we we are what we are in is we are in the new emoji flow right flow to create your own personalized emoji using the new siri that's the context here and the reason it looks like full rainbow and all is because siri is open right siri is now like this when i search here you notice it's Though my only input here is typing it out and I kind of see these previews generate here, right? That's the basic um, flow here. Here, this one, similar, you type this out and these tags kind of show up here so you can individually remove some things. And the input they take here, right? Of course, they take these keyword inputs, but the other one they take is this one, which is choosing a style. And they also have one for, yeah, here we go. Suggestions. So. It's all open up here and you can actually click this. Of course, you can also click these. So now looking at this screen, breaking this down, you're still in a create flow, but this is previous one was for emojis. This is a little bit more complicated, it's for images. What it does is the core, this thing is just 
actually typing it. I mean, I would assume they also have audio, although there's no icon showing here. Core ways you describe it. But the other inputs here is the person. So clicking this, you can probably open something which shows all from your photos and you select somebody. But it also shows some people here, right? These are people maybe who are most shown and so very high likelihood that you click it. It shows a few, you know, there are probably a lot of categories, but it shows four up front here, five, I guess. So similarly here, I think one thing you could do for sure, Simran, is open these out. Um, maybe show me as a strip of things that just open here, because there are like six of them. So if you could do maybe a similar pattern where it just circles, right? You have six that you can browse like that. I think that makes it one tap instead of two taps, right? So in this, for this particular element, similarly for duration, um, you could do the same. Another suggestion here though, is the way you selected this 30, 45, one hour. I don't know if this is the best way, right? Like 30 being minimum, I don't think is the way it should be. I think minimum should be five minutes or something, which is I am evaluating, is this worth it? And so my suggestion in this case, it should probably be 5, 15, 30, one hour or something like that. But also this, yeah, you can expand it out, right? Like that kind of optimizes this input here. Cool. Then you generate it. And then you have this simple flow, right? Um, clean. And then you got the feedback thing. Okay, guys. Chalo. Nice session tonight. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.